everybody, today uh, we're approaching um, a somewhat weightier matter on double bass bows. And um, this is, for me, a particular interesting subject um, as I'm originally um, a violinist and uh, also been playing the viola now for a good number of years. But the double bass is really quite a different animal and so are bass bows. And um, it was probably the longest road um, to achieving what I'm always in the search of, um, the perfect bow. And um, I guess we've, we've come pretty close. Um, this this what I just tried here is the S8, which is our best best bow, um, a French version. Um, I also have some German bows here. Now, with with every instrument, um, there are other key topics when you develop a bow. For example, with the violin, it's tone. So we make bows with a warmer and with a brighter sound because if the tone's not right on the violin. You get a problem. Um, so it, it, it's a very, very clearly defined tone that you're seeking on the violin. On the viola, for example, it's a different um, string length, uh, which requires different tensions in the stick. Um, now, on the bass bow, um, you have several topics. Most and foremost, um, response. So that that's the first thing we need to look at. So we need a bow that responds really, really easy on all strings, on all notes. Um, so you can deliver um, a nice pianissimo without much noise um, and, and really a nice sound. S8, it's, it's really no issue at all. Um, this is a, a medium quality double bass by Björn Stoll, um, which is 8,000 euros. So it's um, not much more expensive than this bow. <laughs> but yeah. Um, so response is the first. Um, clarity um, is very closely related uh, to response. So you get a clear sound when you have a very good response. Um, other bows may be much more noisy. You might also um, have noticed it as a, as a big difference between lesser and better uh, instruments. And uh, the next thing is, of course, and again that's related, is a dynamic range. So you can play really silent on this bow with beautiful sound. So think opera. Uh, but then think um, Beethoven symphonies or whatever. Where you might need to make a real big sound and you also want that to sound clear and you don't want to produce a lot of noise. So that's one. The other thing is um, you want playing characteristics of your bow so that that it never wobbles or dances unintentionally while at the same time offers you an effortless spiccato and, and all the other bowings um, that are required uh, without really really working yourself to death um so yeah and and you can get it all together in a bow, um, though you might not think it does. So let's let's take a look at the John bows, and I also have here some bows to compare them to. Um, so let's begin uh, with our reference bow. This is a nice dobbing bow, um, a beautiful wooden bow, a very nice Pernambuco stick. Um, yeah, good reference really. What you can what you can see in here is that you must be very careful in what 
What exactly you do to get a good sound. Um, and I call that um, the window. And, and its four frames are made from the bowing speed, the downforce you apply, the contact point, and how much you tilt it. So it's like the four frames. And um, if I believe that a good bow um, enlarges this, this window. Um, so you can play um, in a much more variable way. Um, on the one side and the, on the other side, you're just safer in what you do. So if we take a six um, German bow, Arcus bow. You can see I can change the contact point without changing anything else, or I can use the same contact point and change my tilting angle or the bow speed without any difficulties. I can play with more pressure or with less without again changing anything else. So this window is really much wider and um, with a wooden bow I can produce a very nice sound, no doubt. But I must be very, if I try to change the contact point, I run into all kinds of problems. So I have to adjust when I want to play closer to, this, to the bridge. I must be very careful with the tilt and the bow speed and the angle so I can play that. Same on the fingerboard where I need to play a lot faster. Which I don't have to do with the arcus. So um, there is a, a certain limitation um, to every bow. And you can also see that in our range of bows. Uh, like if I take our entry level S4. I don't have quite the freedom. Um, and the window is actually a bit, a bit smaller with the S8. I can do a lot of weird things. <laughs> and it, it will always work. So that is really nice. Um, so um, how is that possible? When you, when we talk about materials um, and compare wood to carbon fiber, um, there are two key differences. Um, one is that um, the density is much higher. So carbon fiber is actually a lot heavier. Though our bows are lighter, how can they be lighter? Because the stick is hollow. So the density of wood is around one kilo kilogram uh, per square decimeter per liter um, so it, it's about the same density as water or milk if you like so if you put a blank of a piece of permanent buckle in, in water it may just swim or just sink about if you put a chunk of carbon fiber in water it'll sink uh, like almost like a stone nah. okay like carbon um, so it's almost twice as heavy so we make the stick hollow. We make it very hollow, actually. It's, it's got only 0.8 millimeter wall thickness. So the stick is, in the end, a lot lighter than the Pernambuco stick. And it's hollow, so I can, it can vibrate much more easily. What is a lot heavier is, is, the, is the head, because that's solid. And it's also got a massive silver tip plate. So the, the head is actually more than twice as heavy as the wooden head. I think it's almost three times its weight. And the same is true with the heel, where we use heavy snake wood on the frog, lots of metal, and the stick is also solid in the rear, because otherwise you just can't fix, fix the frog. So the mass distribution is much different. So, and although the Arcus bow is quite a bit lighter, due to the fact that the head is heavier and the heel is heavier, you get just about the same in-flight stability as a wooden bow. Maybe actually 
even more. So you, you try that yourself. So weight distribution, mass distribution is a very, very important factor, not only the total weight. So the other difference is the speed of sound, which is about 5,000 meter per second in Pernambuco wood and 7,300 in an arco stick. So that's almost 50% higher. And um, so that makes quite a difference. Um, and the next very important factor is damping. And when you look at some tables of material signs, uh, you will find that there are very, there's a wide variety of, of damping um, uh, shown for carbon fiber. And that is because the epoxy content makes a huge difference. So uh, the other reference ball that I have here is another very fine bow, a Coda Bow Infinity. Um, uh, these bows are made for, for a long, for many more years than, than Narcus bows, um, but they are made in a, in a different way, which um, uses a lot more epoxy. So about 60% is epoxy, and while in, in an Arcus bow, it, it's only like 25% roughly. And epoxy is plastic, and it adds a lot of damping. And you can, and you can easily hear and feel and see that. So the response is really a lot more difficult than, let me compare that to the S4. And um, you will also notice that the sound is Pernambuco still a little better than, than the Cotabo um, and well let's do a little unfair comparison with the S8 really sings out very very easy so it's it's really not a lot of work um, to get it going and um, um, so how is the difference here uh, possible well um, the coda bow is also hollow um, we've cut some open um, so be, be assured it doesn't have a core or something that's also hollow it has to be if you if you put in a, a solid core, it would damp even more. Um, but what you can also see is is the the evenness of the wall thickness and the evenness of the fiber distribution, and that is also the difference um, between a lesser and a, and a higher arcus bow. It is it is really really difficult to make our sticks um, as we do work on the edge of technology. And um, in most cases, uh, we do not get a perfect stick like an S8, but an S4, S5, S6. Uh, they are much more. Um, they come up a lot more. And um, this shows some irregularities, both in the wall thickness and in, in the fiber orientation. And that's also causing damping. So the, the figures for the damping are uh, between... Um, Three and a half and seven per mil in Pernambuco wood. Um, that is similar to to conventional carbon fiber, and uh, only one to three percent um, in our Arcus bows. So in in low epoxy carbon fiber. 
So that's that's roughly half the damping as in conventional bows, and you can you can really easy. If I could play the bass, you would hear it. Um, <laughs> so yes, um, that is basically it. Um, um, Go out and, and, and try some bass bows. Oh, one last thing. Um, as I explained, our bows are come out differently, and not every individual S6, for example, will match your bass perfectly. So try to get at least two or maybe three uh, to compare, um, or also try less and more expensive bows to see which one you like best. Um, to work with your your bass, I actually like, for example, this S4 here very much on this bass. It's not quite as sweet as a S6 or S8, absolutely not. But it's it's a lot of bang for the buck. So I hope you've liked this video and. Um, We'll go out and, and try some Archispace bows and um, at least do subscribe um, or like this video and share it. Um, and uh, do take a look at our other videos where I explain a lot more about other bows. Thanks a lot. See you.